success. Never confuse success for blessing. It is contentment and fulfillment that assures you that I am where God wants me to be. Fulfillment. You, you, you see men making money but they are not happy. You see men doing great things but they are not happy. Because money can never fulfill the gap that is meant to be fulfilled by your mandate. Alignment. The second thing you need to be very conscious about, number two, is the verification or clarity of your assignment. Clarity of your assignment. Clarity of your assignment. Clarity of your assignment. Number one is location. Are we together? Number one is location. Number two is clarity of assignment. In this life, God created work, but men innovated jobs. God planted a garden in the east of Eden. I believe it is in Genesis 2 and verse 14, if I'm not wrong. Let's look at that scripture. Fifteen, Genesis two, fifteen. God took the man and set him down in the garden of Eden to work the ground and keep it in order. The language is there was Eden and then there was a garden. Many people always think the whole area was a garden. The, the name Eden means the place of joy, the place of peace, the place of serenity. In, in summary, we call Eden the presence of God. But in that presence, there was work. That's why there is a garden in the presence. Now, every man was created for work. But when you entered earth, you were prepared for jobs. I will go slowly. The look on your face is not very good. Now, every man was prepared for work. But when you enter the realm of men, they prepare you for jobs. Now, work is your purpose and your assignment. Work is your purpose and your assignment. You will not enter heaven by the ranks you have attained in your secular job. You will enter heaven by the fulfillment of the work. That's why the Bible says, in that day, the greatest thing you can hear is welcome good and faithful servant. Why? You are busy with the work of God. Work is what you are created to do. That is your purpose. Work, purpose. Your, your reason of being your reason of existence, your essence of being on this world, that is your work. The greatest discovery is not being employed, is discovering why you are on earth. And I tell you, when you discover why you are on earth, you'll discover you have no time. Majority of the things that happen among the people is because they have never known why they're on earth. And they say, when you don't know your reason of being, you will abuse your seasons of being. When you don't know your reason of being, you will abuse your season of being. So sometimes the problem is not hashtag shere. Sometimes the problem you have not answered the question, why am I here? So if you don't answer that question, then anything that flows in the world, you will be a part of it. But when you have clarity of assignment, you have something to live for. And when you have something to live for, then you have something to die for. And something to sacrifice for. Many people walk up because the alarm rang. But there are people who walk up because time is not enough. And they have great visions, great ambitions. So there is work for us to do here. The reason why people don't get born again and evaporate to heaven is because there is work here. In the book of John 19, Jesus is 
praying for the disciples and he tells the Lord, let them stay a little longer. As Jesus was going, he never went to the disciples. He said, let them stay a little longer. And the Bible says in the book of Luke, do business until I come. So I don't know why you're in a hurry to go to heaven. And God has said, do business until I come. So the day he will come, let him find you in his business. Hallelujah. Yeah. Why are you here? What can you do? Are you just a tourist who came to take selfies and die? No. There is something greater in your existence than just breathing in and breathing out. Inhaling and exhaling, there is something greater. It's called purpose. Are we together? And when a man discovers his work, that man has begun to live. I'm sorry because when you study the history of academia, many, many, many education institutions were pioneered by uh, uh, the former years. Majority of education institutions are there to train men as workers. So education is to equip you as a laborer. Uh, and it was industries when they felt they needed workers they began to train them on the work so majority of what we call career is not bad but career is for survival and it is good and i'm coming to that but career is not your assignment i like the way you're looking at me you know sometimes i was telling my wife when a pastor goes one week revival meeting in a different town just one week to preach the gospel in a different town. That man looks like he doesn't love his family. He looks like he's not loving, he's not. How can you leave your family for one week to go and preach? When a man goes for one month in America to go and work, he looks like he's very focused. If today you take one week leave to go for missions, you look like you have no priorities in life. But if you sacrifice your leave days to make more money, you look very serious in life. You can see what career has made us to be. And so we have made the work of God to be what we do when we have time. But we take all the time that God has given us to do what he never even created us to do. Man was created for work. Now, there is a reason why there is a job. Because the job is supposed sometimes to facilitate your work. Okay. So, I was a preacher before I came to full-time ministry. And the law of full-time ministry is never enter full-time ministry until the church needs you full-time. You have no business running a church of 20 members and you have five pastors. That, that is... You have so much labor. Five pastors in a congregation of 20 members. You are not serious with life. And 20 members, you can deal with them on Sunday. Sunday is the pastor's day and Sunday is service. So you cannot say you are in full-time ministry and you have 20 members. You are also joking. But there is a time when the ministry needs you full-time. And the ministry can keep you full-time. Because you were... They are able also to cater for a few things. Now, in the season when I was in ministry but not full time, I used to work. And the money I made out of my job financed my preaching. But my heartbeat was not in the job. My heartbeat was in the preaching. Are you getting me? So I made sure that there was balance. Every Friday I would come up and leave Kisi. We are talking about six hours drive. Come to Nairobi. Preach the weekend on Sunday night. Guardian angel or mashpoa back to Kisi. Because if I abandon the work of God because of the job that men have given me, then I will be doing myself an injustice. And sometimes God will open a door of a job because of his work. So if the job takes the time of his work 